everybody. Welcome to the Fundamental Analysis webinar here with Avatrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting. As we get started, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, uh, just type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. OK, looks like we're up and running fine. If anyone has any issues as we're going along, feel free to let me know. And always keep in mind that uh, there's risk involved with each trade that you take. Uh, in one way or another, you want to manage risk in a way that makes sense for you. And we'll go through some ideas in that regard uh, within the session when we get a chance. There are some nice tools in our Web Trader and Avatrade Go app that, that help make the risk management side of things easier. And also keep in mind that what we cover is not meant to be financial advisement, but is coming from an educational perspective. Now, from our main website, uh, we have access to our web trader, which allows you to trade on both uh, MT4 and MT5 trading accounts from one location. And the same is true for, with our Avatrade Go mobile app. If you go under trading platforms, you'll find the Avatrade Go uh, mobile app listed under mobile trading. And so you can download the Arbitrade Go mobile app from the major app stores, whether it's the Apple App Store or Google Play, and you'll find that it has the same features and functionalities that we're about to use on our web trader. Uh, so whether you're trading from your mobile device or from your, your PC or laptop, uh, you can have the same uh, fundamental analysis tools that we're about to use. So if we log in here, then we're in the web trader platform. And there are a couple areas where I think we'll focus today. Uh, one will be on a couple economic announcements that look key coming in today that really, when we look at the historical data, give us quite a, a picture in terms of the predictability uh, of this data as, as it pertains to that, those past movements. And so let's go to the economic calendar. And we'll focus on some announcements that are coming out of the US uh, today that have yet to come in. And so we'll look on, on today's date only, and you can pick the date range that you want here and the countries that you want included to show in the economic calendar. Now, this red line represents the current time. So everything behind it or above it, I should say, already occurred. And the announcements below the red line have not occurred yet. And so as we look here, we've got some, some data coming in that reflects upon the economic situation in the U.S. And, and the focus in the past weeks and months has really been on trying to interpret how the data gives insight into what's happening with the, the, the situation as it relates to inflation. Inflation has been the, the largest focus over the past year plus really with these announcements to see did inflation stop rising, which eventually it did with the, the measures that the central banks around the world and, and specifically the central bank in the US took to raise interest rates and uh, you know be bolt, more bullish with monetary policy and that, help bring inflation down, but not to the point yet that uh, those measures can be removed. Interest rates are still uh, at record highs uh, in the US, or recent record highs, I should say. And with interest rates being so high, the hope is that inflation then will come down, that that'll decrease buying power and buying demand uh, with such high interest rates. And, and that then that decrease in buying power will eventually bring prices down, bring down inflation. And, and it has worked some, but not to the degree that satisfies the monetary policy makers in the US to say, okay, we can lower interest rates back down now. They haven't been able to say that, that they're to that point yet. And so as we look at things like personal spending, like income level, uh, like the core prices, this all of this reflects upon uh, will there be anticipated inflation drops or not? You know, if personal spending is up higher than expected instead of dropping, for example, if it 
if it instead of dropping from 0.8 to 0.5 percent increase if it went up to 1.0 instead of the expected drop that would show that you know, buying power and spending is stronger than expected, which you would think could keep prices high. And so as this data comes in better than expected, uh, as it has over the past weeks and months, uh, it creates fear that uh, inflation will not go away anytime soon. And by inflation, I mean higher than, uh, than is, is deemed ideal inflation. Obviously, there's a certain level of inflation, maybe around 2%, uh, that, that is deemed healthy, that there's healthy demand in the economy. But when the inflation rate is uh, you know, 4% or, or even 10% that it was at, uh, that, that's kind of considered inflation that's at a level that, that harms the economy, that's not healthy. And so... Uh, if personal income is up, if spending is up, uh, if core PCE price index is higher than expected, et cetera, that could create fear again. Or the opposite, if these numbers come in lower than expected, it could create optimism that, hey, inflation is under control better and, and maybe interest rates can come back down sooner rather than later, which kind of makes everyone's life easier with lo lower mortgage rates, lower uh, personal loan or business loan rates, car loans, et cetera, everything becomes cheaper if, if the interest rates can be lowered back down. But if they do that too quickly, then buying demand comes back too quick and inflation goes right back up. So it's a, a kind of stuck here waiting for inflation to really calm down further before lowering interest rates in the U.S. So uh, this data is looked at heavily then. Many investors and traders are looking at this data to see, will it give some insight as to whether inflation is coming down further or not, uh, even if they aren't directly the inflationary numbers. So for example, if we look at personal income, it's expected to actually go up month over month further than it did the prior month. Instead, instead of a 0.3% increase, personal income is expected to go up 0.4% month over month. So if we look then at one of these tools, and this volatility tool allows us to look back at the past announcements and qualify those announcements and say, well, if they came in higher than expected in the past or lower than expected in the past with this data, what happened with the movement on different currency pairings? So we can pick the currency pairing we want. I'll leave it on Euro USD. We could pick the time frame. How long after each of these announcements do we want to look on the charts? For now, we'll leave four hours. And then we could qualify. Are, do we want to look at all the events? What, regardless of how they came in, to me, that's less informative. So we'll qualify it and say, if these numbers indeed come in above forecast, if personal income is higher than expected, what happens? And so in the past, that has happened five times in, in the recent past, over the past year or so. That's what this data is looking back. And we can see that if personal income came in higher than the expected number, 80% of the time, the USD strengthened and pulled the euro down in the four hours after the event. And that's with a range movement of nearly 50 pips. Okay, so uh, that's pretty strong data. If we're looking and saying 80% of the time, four out of five times, if I would have sold when, when personal income on this announcement came in higher than expected, I could have had a nice profit, okay? Uh, and some of these movements, if I look at this one, it's about 40 pips down. So it's a range movement of 49 and 40 pip drop. This one was 31 pip drop. So some of that movement was up before it was down because the range movement is larger than the total drop. So what does that tell you? That tells you if you look maybe five minutes after the event or 15 minutes, some of the ones that ended up down actually spiked up. Here we have two of them up in the first five minutes. And the ones that dropped, dropped a maximum of 14 pips. Okay, this one's 14 pips. This, these two are less, less than 10 pips, these two. So in the first five minutes, you see the data came in above 
expectation for personal income, you know from the past it's ranged about 50 pips movement. This has only moved less than 10 pips on two of these, 14 pips on one, and two of them went up. And you know, 80% of the time in the past, it ends up down after four hours. So it's not too late to make a trade. Even two, three, four, five minutes after, some of these actually went the opposite direction than where they will end up after four hours, where 80% ended up down. So not only did the majority of these drop, but some of that movement was up in the early going to where you could have even had a larger potential profit and realized even a larger portion of this full range movement that includes up and down movement. Okay, so uh, it's very interesting to look at the timing of the movements, the directionality, and the percent of the time that it went in a certain direction within a certain range movement. So now you, you get an understanding of a complete trading strategy here where you know how far maybe to put your take profit, how far back you might put your stop loss based on these movements, uh, and what direction you might trade based on how the numbers come in. So above forecast, 80% certainty in the past that it ended up down. Uh, if we go below forecast, what if the numbers come in lower than expected? Okay, it's 50-50. The movements were 50-50, two times up, two times down. So with this particular announcement, there seems to be uh, a fear factor that hits if the numbers come in higher than expected, where the USD strengthens quite rapidly, and 80% of the time the US dollar pulls the euro down, if it's above forecast. If it's below forecast, not much of a reaction, 50-50, okay? So it seems the statistical advantage is only if this comes in above forecast and you can catch an entry point you like that the majority of the time it's dropped in the past, okay? A large majority, like four to one uh, majority, 80 to 20, okay? Any questions on this tool, what we're looking at here, how it works? I'll pause for a moment. Okay, if I see any questions pop up, I'll, I'll address them as we go. All right, and we could look at uh, an announcement later in the day, consumer sentiment. And I looked at some of these others. They didn't have a dramatic statistical effect. The personal income month over month seemed to be the strongest one out of this group. These all come in at the same time, these ones here. So the one that seemed to have the largest statistical advantage from the past was this one, personal income month over month. Now, if we look at the consumer sentiment, which is a later announcement, you could get a second shot at using this type of strategy. Uh, we'll, we'll use Euro USD four hours after the event. If these come in above forecast, pretty strong statistical data again. 75% of the time, if the consumer sentiment is higher than expected, meaning sentiment is positive, people still wanna spend money. If that comes in like that, stronger than expected, higher than expected, the USD rapidly strengthens in the hours following the announcement 75% of the time. I mean, look at the size of the drops compared to the two that went the other way. This barely went up, this one barely went up, and those that dropped, the majority of them dropped two or three times the distance of the ones that went up. So not only in this case, when it comes in above forecast, has it dropped 75% of the time, but it's also dropped much further than the ones that went up, okay? So you have a large statistical uh, and directional advantage here uh, selling in the past if the Michigan consumer sentiment comes in higher than expected. Okay, and if it comes in below expectation, it's the opposite, right? Look at all the green up, two out of three up, two thirds of the time climbing, and the distance of the climb on average, if you put these two together and take an average, is much higher than the distance of the one that went down. Okay, and again, it's not like, you know, the average range of movement's 46 pips after four hours. It's not like you missed the movement in the first five minutes. If I look in the first five minutes, these have only moved 13 pips on average, a range movement of 13 and a half pips. Okay, this here is 12, 12 and a quarter pips, 11 and change. This one went maybe one and a half pips in the first five minutes. After four hours, we're talking 
40 pips, 9, 10 pips, okay? And the one that lost would have lost maybe 9 or 10 pips. So these two would have canceled each other out had you bought each time this came in below forecast. And this one would have been all profit after four hours, okay? And and the, the same same if the opposite comes in. If it comes in above forecast, a lot more red dropping than we have green going up, okay? So these can be very powerful tools, uh, powerful announcements to be able to predict based on the fundamental news that already came in with the benefit of hindsight, with not trying to guess what the announcement will be, but watching the numbers come in and still being able to use the past data then to potentially gain a statistical advantage with your trades, already knowing what the data was after it came in. Okay. Again, I'll pause. Any questions, comments? Okay. And if I see any questions pop in, I will uh, address them as they occur. So if we go back to the main trade area, we can use another tool that incorporates uh, fundamental analysis, fundamental news to be able to try and understand what's happening around the world and then use that as an advantage to help us try to predict which direction certain instruments will move, okay? You know, there, there are earnings coming in today just before market open from Chevron, ExxonMobil, you know, based on how that earnings in information comes in, uh, that could affect not just those stocks, but maybe the energy industry in general with crude oil, et cetera. So understanding what's upcoming is important. And we also can take a look at what already occurred. So if we go to, say, the market buzz. Now, yesterday, earnings data came in from Microsoft, uh, from, from Google, and was better than expected. Those stocks jumped, okay? You follow that news, then, then you can understand what you might want to do with trading on it. So we'll pull up Google here, Alphabet. And we see price may rise 11.1%. And we can look at the technical analysis of it, okay? doesn't need to be just fundamental news. It makes sense to consider the fundamentals and also look at the technical analysis. Okay, we have a free signal coming here uh, from Trading Central with a trend analysis. They expect potentially over 9% rise uh, on Alphabet. And we see the resistance levels where they say you might want to take profit up here around 167.50 or just below. And so if the market opens today and it's already to that level, then maybe you missed that move, you missed that signal. If it's not to that level, then maybe it's a consideration to make a move on a signal like this. And you see the signal even draws a pivot line, this blue line, the movement drops below there, then they're suggesting you sell towards the red lines. But as long as we're above this support level, which they call pivot level here, then they're looking for further upside. Now, not only do the technicals show a potential uptrend, but you can read the fundamental articles that might also lead you to believe that fundamentally you believe it should go up, okay? And so I mentioned that their uh, earnings came out, Microsoft, Alphabet, and that they were better than expected. So here's, a, here's an article, Alphabet stock surges 11% on blowout earnings and first dividend for Google owners. So there's now Alphabet, AKA, Google will be paying dividends on their stock. That's something new. That'll increase demand maybe for their stock. And also the fact that their revenue numbers and earnings per share blew away the expectations yesterday. So you can click the article, read a little synopsis of the article, or click story continues and read the entire article and understand why might there be a prediction for, for this stock to potentially rise and you read about the numbers that came in uh, for yourself. And so you can find the sources of information very quickly and efficiently using the market buzz. You also at the same time can see, well, what's the technical signal that's there by clicking here on the trend analysis and see if those things are in alignment. 
And if they are, then maybe that's part of the checklist of your strategy to decide uh, that you will make a move on something or not. And so, you know, if the technicals align with how you like it, if your entry point when the market opens is where you want it, and if the fundamental news articles also support in your mind that, hey, this is uh, in line with the signal prediction, then maybe you make a move, okay? And so this is how you take these different tools, whether it's the free signals, the trend analysis, the articles, uh, the economic announcements, to put them together to paint a bigger picture for your strategy to say, okay, now I'm confident to make this trade, okay? So, and we can look at any instrument within uh, Avatrade's offerings using the, the market buzz tool. So these are individual stocks. We also could be looking at cryptocurrencies. We could be looking at commodities, etc. Okay, we could see uh, what's the latest talk about gold and see what articles are there. We can see the trend analysis. Uh, trend analysis says it's stable. There's not a big prediction up or down from a technical perspective. Okay, it doesn't say predicting a big climb or a big drop. It says trend is stable, okay, currently. And you can read the latest articles that relate to gold as well. Okay, so we can do this for any instrument that we offer, and you can get an idea of what's the latest fundamental news that's coming out. And each of those articles that, that, that you find are timestamped. Okay, you see in the news feed the time that these came in six minutes ago, 17 minutes ago, 24 minutes ago, et cetera. Okay, any questions, comments at this point on the market buzz or, or anything that we've covered for that matter so far? Okay, uh, yeah, we can cover the risk management part of things as well. Let, let's say that you've, you've made a look, you've evaluated a few things and you've decided you wanna make a trade on a particular instrument based on the, the articles from the market buzz or the economic calendar and an announcement that just came in. Uh, let's pretend I wanted to trade on the Euro USD that maybe uh, the personal income, let's pretend just came in, if that announcement just came in uh, and, and it was higher than expected. We say, ah, well, 80% of the time it showed in the economic calendar tool that in the next four hours, 80% uh, of the time, the euro drops against the USD when the personal income is higher than expected. So it, if, if it had come in that way, then I right away would be thinking about finding the entry point that I might be able to get. Do I like that entry point in terms of what I expect the movement to be over the next four hours uh, based on the economic calendar tool that we used? And so then I could risk manage my trade using the order window. So let's say I wanted to sell on Euro USD. I could use Ava Protect if I wanted to protect by the hour. If I'm expecting to get out of this within four hours, I could protect my trade for the next three hours or six hours. Whatever trade size I, I, I pick, the price changes. And so I could say uh, I'm willing to risk 200 on the protection. So then I can increase my trade size until that's the amount that the trade protection costs me. So a lot size of 1.65 is around 200 cost. And if, if I think that this could drop a certain number of pips, I could put uh, where I think this could drop to. Maybe I think it could drop to uh, 106 even down to this support level here. Okay, it was down here earlier today. Maybe I think it can get in this range. And so, uh, or earlier in the week, I should say. And maybe I think it could drop down towards these low points where it was at earlier in the week. So let's say 106.20. And so I can, I can look and see that my potential profit on this move was 1,848. The cost of pr the protection is only 197. And, and understand, wow, I'm not risking much for the potential profit I could make, okay? Uh, I also, if I don't want to use the protection through Ava Protect, I can use a stop loss. And depending where I put my stop loss, I, it's going to calculate my possible loss based on my trade size, 
and the spot of my stop loss. So I see my possible loss is 132. My possible profit is 1,844. Maybe I decide, you know what, I think I, I would want to sell, but I would want to take profit at this support level here. Okay, it's an old support level from the past. Maybe if it drops, it might stop dropping around 107, 106.99. So then I say, okay, if I if I put my take profit at 106.99, now my possible profit is 539 and my possible loss is 130. It's still better than three to one, four to one uh, possible profit to risk. So I can very easily start to risk manage figure out where do I want my take profit based on how much profit that would be. And based on the technical analysis, old support and resistance levels, and also know how much am I risking to my stop loss. So it's very easy. And I, I'm not going to carry this trade through because that announcement actually didn't happen yet. That I, I was making up a, a fictitious situation where that data already came in and was higher than expected. And so I wanted to sell on the Euro USD. But the point is how easy it is to risk manage within our order window, whether you use ABA Protect or whether you use stop loss and take profit only, uh, you can see your potential profit and risk right there before you make the trade. Very simple uh, to do that. I think this is a good spot to stop. There are announcements coming soon today out of the US. I encourage you maybe to pay attention to those announcements if you want to try out the strategy that we went over on the economic calendar. You also could see when the market opens, some of those US stocks, whether it's Microsoft, Google, uh, or Alphabet, uh, to see how are they reacting to those earnings numbers that came in yesterday, and can you get an entry point that makes sense in terms of making a move based on the trend analysis prediction that we saw in the in the market buzz feature. All right, everybody, good luck with the trading. Have a good weekend, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye for now.